All right, so we have here a match. This is a Storm League match? Yes. Okay, and, and your rank here in this game is Silver 2, correct? Or 3, Silver, silver two, 2 or 3. Okay. All right, so in, your, in this game you're going to be on the Thrall. Let's take a look at this draft. We have Lili, Orphea, Tyrael, Thrall, and Melganus. And you guys are up against uh, Stitches, Lucio, Sylvanas, Lunara, and Azebo. All right, cool. So there's a couple things uh, I want to point out right away. Um, but before I do, I, I'll go ahead and ask you, uh, what would you say are your, your team's strengths and weaknesses? I feel like we've got the fair amount of CC with the sleep and um, uh, Tyrael's uh, charge and then, you know, my, my wolf or whatever. Right. But the weakness is Lily trying to heal all of that uh, damage. They do have a lot of range damage, a lot of sustained damage. Sylvanas, Lunara, and Azeba all do very sustained damage, some of it poison damage, much of it poison damage, actually. Not to mention Stitches. They have a lot of poison damage. So um, I'm hoping that the Lily will go for as high a sustained healing build as possible. Like you don't need cleanse this game. Uh, this would be definitely a choice to take the extra healing over time. But you also have Tyrael, which will help with the AoE shielding. So that's good. Thrall is a fantastic hero for self-sustain as well. You'll have your own built-in healing. Uh, Orphea as well. So like you guys have really good tools to deal with this type of composition. But more important than all of that is, simply speaking, the number of frontliners that your team has versus theirs. They have a single frontliner, and that's Stitches. And he's not even really uh, something that can like sit in your in your team. It's not like a Johanna or a Muradin or something. Stitches has no you know jump or whatever. And uh, so he has to be positioned relatively safely, uh, unless he's got his Lucio to speed him out. Your team has Tyrael, Thrall, and Melganus as a front line, which is very beefy. It's something that can, can stay put for a, a while. Um, and that's important on Sky Temple because here you have temples that spawn, and it's a matter of who's sitting on the temple. So if, if both teams are contesting, I guarantee you, your team is the one that's going to actually get control of the shrine, at least at first. Eventually, their team composition could, you know, wear you down to the point where you can't stay there any longer. Uh, and if you stay too long, they could chase you down with Lucio speed. So that's the threat. Um, there's one other thing that is really important as far as the draft goes, which is they didn't pick a solo laner. They they picked, uh, you know, I guess the best case scenario for them solo laning is Nazebo, maybe Lunara. It's not ideal. Um, in all of these cases, none of these solo laners have a form of like true self-sustain. And so you as a thrall, I'm assuming you're going to be in the solo lane here. I don't, I don't know for sure. Uh, yeah, you do have well, Melganus as well. Yeah, as well. I did go. I think we were originally, we, in the early part, we were going to do 1-1-1 one, 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 and, um, and then try to get a two-man rum team. Okay. You know? okay. And, then, and then I was like, well, no, wait a second. I got a stack. <laughs> Okay. Because I went Echo uh, Elements, and then it never really... Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah, so I, I just kind of stay the bottom lane until, you know... Okay, so uh, first things first. Um, as far as this game, as this uh, map is concerned, generally speaking, the solo lane, uh, you want to start up here a little bit, because uh, your foreman is the one that's going to be taking the siege camp. As the solo laner, if you're in the bottom lane, you can't really take this camp super well. Um, because it, you, 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 there's, there's no time for you as a solo laner to, to deal with this while dealing with the lane. So it's much better for your foreman to be dealing with the middle, the bottom, and taking this camp first. If your team wants to, they can go for this camp afterwards to time it well with the objective. Um, but generally speaking, the solo laner starts here, and after you've taken the siege camp, you can start to rotate down to the bottom lane. Um, uh, so yeah, anyway, just so you know. But more importantly, when you're playing Thrall in the solo lane, that's a lot too too much noise. Turn down. All right. Um, when you're playing Thrall in solo lane, one thing that's to take into consideration is his chain lightning, just as a very safe way of doing damage as well as giving yourself self-sustain. So what you want to be doing is you want to be zoning enemy heroes out of the range of experience. And I'm going to show you exactly what that means, but uh, against this team, none of them have any form of self-sustain 
uh, to deal with the constant pokes. If every single time you press Chain Lightning, it hits an enemy hero, they can't stay. It's not possible. So I'm glad that you did go Echo of Elements, but in the early game, I wouldn't mind you giving up stacks in exchange for zoning them out of experience, if that's something that you can do. Okay. But uh, when you, when, I'll, I'll, I'll go over exactly how to maximize the stacking process. Um, let me go ahead and, oops, let me, Z, there we go, big screen. All right. So first and foremost, uh, you guys are, are very split at the very start of the match. So some of you go, two of you go for the vision, two of you go very deep into the mid, mid lane, and then you're on the bottom side. So I w this is probably an, this is just an overextension, generally speaking, in the middle. Um, but it looks like you guys do get the better side of that trade. But they have their healer here, so that's not ideal. But you guys get the vision. You have this, what is this, Sylvanas? Yeah. I think Sylvanas, or I think Orphea can win the trade as long as she doesn't miss her Q. So this should be okay down here. And meanwhile down here, you're doing really well. I, I didn't even see the exact trade that happened, but I'm going to go ahead and guess that you landed your Feral Spirit, got your full Wind Fury off and everything, so that's really good. This is a fantastic opener for you. Um, so here's here's a situation where you actually don't want to be killing the minions. Because if you kill the minions, your minions then walk up and die here. This is what happens. He's really low. So if he wants to come and soak, let him. But make this the line of scrimmage. You see? Okay. So, and yeah, this is how you play Thrall. This is how you play solo lane Thrall, is that... You try to make that line of scrimmage as far back for your side as possible. Perfect scenario is that it's crashing right here. Your towers aren't hitting the minions, but they're just lining up here. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how to get make that happen. But um, for right now, the best case scenario, since you've got Echo of the Elements and he's too far away to hit, go ahead and just wait until the minions are about to kill a minion, and then use your Q on it right before it dies. And you, doing this, you can usually get two to three stacks very safely, uh, off of every wave. You can get more if, you, if you're if you aggressive, but this is the safest way to do it. You could be standing over here and still getting two to three stacks a wave. But now you see that he's, he's tapped and he's still sticking around. So now it's important for you to, um, to keep on pressing that chain lightning on him whenever possible. Ideally, you want to press it while he's close enough to either his buildings or these minions so that it's not just a single tick from the chain lightning, right? Because it bounces three times, and each bounce gives you uh, s uh, like a stack of Frostwolf resilience and at five stacks. So uh, four, four hits basically off of every chain lightning. So it's almost a full heal every Q as long as it hits the maximum number. There we go. All right, so this is actually what he's doing right now is sort of what, what you want to be doing, which is uh, creating the line of scrimmage right here. He sort of messed up a little bit by getting a little too close, but in a perfect world for him, he stops killing these minions right here so that the towers don't kill them, the minions start crashing, and then your minions don't stop here. They keep going. And that means you're going to be more out of position. But he didn't do that. He just kept killing them, so the line of scrimmage is now here. All right. You're allowing him to get too close. So here's a situation where you could be just bullying him with chain lightning. Um, you know, one or two more chain lightnings, and he's he has to back. Basically, he can't stick around because if you land a wolf, he's dead. Let's take a look. Did he go toad build? Yeah, he did. Okay, so you can dodge the toads while threatening him. So yeah, you're going for the minions for the stacks. Uh, it's, it's not low enough to get the stack, but more importantly. It's not doing any damage to him, and the wolf is too far away to, to get the value. And that is one thing that's very important about early game Thrall, before level 4, is that every ability kind of has to matter, because you go oom pretty quickly with, with Thrall, and at level 4 you're going to pick up, I assume, the mana talent. Yes. And that'll, that'll make it a lot easier for you to just spam your abilities. Alright, so I just want to take a quick peek, because I don't you haven't missed any soak. You've got 904. 
he has missed some soak. So you can already see he started to miss some soak, right? Mm -hmm. But you could have you could have made him miss more. I think that um, by pressuring him with more chain lightnings and not pushing the wave into his towers, I think at this point you could have forced him to back and miss an entire wave. So just just so you have it in mind, what's possible? All right. So the Lunar looks like he's stepping out. All right. Yeah, I wouldn't chase this. Um, he stepped out a little bit far, but it's two versus one. There's really no need to force a fight right now. Best case scenario, I don't think there's any, any way that you kill Lunar since you missed your wolf, and he can just always walk away. Um, you might trade decently well if you can get away without... Yeah, there's no, no spiders anymore, so as long as you don't get zombie walled, you should be okay. He's just going to walk away. And now you're in a very precarious position. If anybody is paying attention on their team in mid lane, they should be rotating down to catch you right now. Uh, I definitely would not have recommended this course of action. I would have recommended trade here while you're very close to your towers if you really want to, but the safe play is definitely just to hang back, chill by your towers, wait for the minions to get closer. As is, you're going to end up missing this soak and put yourself in danger. But the benefit of it is that they had two people down here, which means that your team has a benefit up here. But your team doesn't seem to be doing much with that benefit, so... It is what it is. So, yeah, early game, I said it already, but you definitely want to be careful with your mana consumption. Um, using Feral Spirit for wave clear, I wouldn't recommend unless you need it for healing. So if you are, you know, low and the enemy minion wave is all in a line, go ahead and rip your, your Feral Spirit. At this point, I would not have, have used it. I think you've got to be a little bit more mana conservative. You do still have your tap available, but the objective hasn't spawned yet, so... Definitely want to make sure that you have that available. This is fantastic right now. So the, the line of scrimmage is right here. You can try and keep it that way. But it looks like you're just primarily only focusing on stacking. And in a, in a case where you're up against a real soul laner, a soul laner that has self-sustain, that's the correct thing to do. Uh, play it safe, get your stacks, etc. But in a case where you're up against, you know, an Azeba or whatever, it's much more valuable to des deny the soak than it is for you to finish the, the quest early. Okay. See, I was kind of freaking out because I was like, I'm so far behind on my stacks, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, and I just wasn't sure what I should be doing. Here's the other thing. He's an Azebo, You're a Thrall. He, you get every globe, right? He gets no globes. So his mana is eventually going to go down. His health bar is eventually going to wear down. So definitely important. Make sure you're grabbing those. Yeah, okay. Okay, so the perfect situation right now is essentially, I'm going to show you what you do with your mouse. You hold down the right mouse button and you slowly inch it, really like this slowly, as slowly as I'm doing it. You inch it towards your base. What that's going to do is it's going to walk your character super slowly. It's going to take little baby steps. And these, these archer minions are going to look like they're about to fire, then they'll take a step forward, look like they're about to fire, take another step forward, they'll keep on doing it. You'll basically catch them in the attack animation and just barely outrange them every time they try to fire. And what that does is it means you take no damage, but they get ever so closer to being here. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. And you can do it, you can just like sit there and tank them. That's one way to do it if they're, re if they're already where they need to be. But obviously, don't want to take free damage if you don't need to. So that's how you do that. All right. So, okay. Even just that, you, you sort of lost a little bit of positioning there just by stepping forward for the minions. You want them to crash as, as far forward as possible. Because here's the thing. If they crash right here, guess what? You step into this bush, or this bush, either one, and he can't soak. That's it. Because the moment he, he steps up to soak, you should be mounted already, and you should just literally run at him, and as soon as it's a free target to wolf, essentially, where he has nowhere to go besides one direction, then you get a free wolf, free, free uh, wind fury, chain lightning, as many auto attacks as you can get. Chances are you can chunk him for like 60-70% of his health bar, um, if that all goes according to plan. And, and then he has to back. So definitely important to be using these bushes, zoning him out of the experience. 
right now he's not he's not scared um, of you for for dying purposes. Right now he's just throwing out abilities to catch stacks, catch soak. All right. So the objective is coming up soon. This is not being soaked right now, so I do think it would be better for you to leave the bottom lane at this point, catch this mid soak, and be the first one onto the temples here. Looks like you're going to stick around a little bit here. I mean, Nazebo's here too, so it's not like you're hurting your team. It is still a four versus four. But I would argue that it's better for you to be up there unless you're denying soak. Right now, you're not denying soak, so there's. It's sort of a wash. Yeah, I wasn't. I really wasn't sure what to do. I was like, well, you know, and then right now, it's like they've got bows, but. We're right. all going top, right. so yeah. I wouldn't. I would. I just yeah. was completely kind of puzzled. This was a matter of just you know your team wasn't ready to get on the temples as soon as possible. As soon as you see that they're taking two, it means that you can force on them, can have superior numbers. So it is good that your team is together, but they should be really quickly moving up onto that. Try and go for a kill, maybe. It does look like Orphea is heading to mid, which is not good because that's not a one v one that you really want to take. Meanwhile, on bottom, it's still going on like that. You don't have really much kill pressure up here. That's the problem. So with Orphea up here, maybe you guys could land a kill. But um, your composition is much less raw damage than theirs is. Right? They have a lot of constant sustained damage. And your team has, like, uh, Orphea has burst damage that's based on skill shots, which is... Very reliant on, you know, uh, what's it called? They have a Lucio, so movement speed actually makes a big difference there. Um, he, Orphea is going to really need slows and crowd control roots and stuff, sleeps to land all of her abilities. And you are a large part of the damage as well in, in team fights. So that's the other reason why I don't think it's good, great for you to be staying in this bottom lane for the duration of, of the first uh, objective, even though there's the Nazebo down here. Okay, really good stun. Is that not quite enough? Okay, that's unfortunate. Yeah, if Orphea was up here for sure, that's a kill. Not to mention these guys. Oh, that's still a kill? Oh my goodness, so well. Okay, nonetheless, it's not terrible. You guys get the majority of the shots on top. They get, um, I think maybe, uh, yeah, this is not, not ideal. So instead of having done gone for the objective here, uh, or for the camp here, um, as soon as you're finished catching whichever wave you were at previously, I would have had headed to this this one as well. Because you you have uh, awareness of how many people they had up here. They lost this fight, and whoever is sitting on this is going to have been taking all the damage. As you see, he's already at like 40%. So you right. could have you could have come up here, uh, caught a little bit of the soak as you went up, maybe even killed stitches and gotten the rest of the shots, which is. Not in, uh, it's not insignificant because this is the, the last five shots banked into the last whatever. So this would be ten shots, um, which would be worth fighting for. It would be pretty good. Yeah, this, as this, I did this, I was like, this is a bad misplay. Right. And, that, and then right about here, I realized I can't get can't the wave the cleared can't before I the lose the soak. And mm -hmm. yeah, it was just a disaster. That's sort of what I was talking about when I said, like, Soul Laner doesn't want to be in this lane be to do this camp because it's, it, you're going to end up missing Soak if you're doing that and the other person's, like, focusing 100% on, on the wave. And I, um, I lose the whole wave. Yeah, that's, this, yeah. Is gone. But, this is gone. Yeah. And, and I just remember thinking, but if I leave the camp, I've lost the camp and the wave. You know, it's, it's yes, like it was just totally. such a bad decision. Totally. Yeah, it's some cost fallacy. I get it. Um, I think, you know, it's not entirely on you there because your team should have done this camp, but um, your composition doesn't have the best camp takers, so that's partially the issue. Like that's the first camp that's been taken this whole game, actually, which is uh, definitely something you'll see a lot more of at lower ranks. At higher ranks, you'll see camps taken pretty much on cooldown, if not taken strategically for good timing. So in this case, the bottom camp here. The perfect timing for that would have been um, right before the objective. Right before the objective, because yeah. if you want 
Nazebo to stay down here and keep catching the soak and, and dealing with these, it means he can't come up for the objective, and that means that you can guarantee your team has a man advantage and you could make a play. Um, especially if they didn't do their siege. So that would be the ideal situation. After the objective is done, it's kind of moot point. The next objective always spawns only one in the bottom lane, and that's why you want to, uh, when you want to time this camp up here so that the top lane is pushing. Um, I think that if you time the next camp perfectly, you just straight up get the top fort without even being there because the camp just pushes it for you. Skip ahead a little bit. So they're going to do their camp. They have a lot more people on the bottom side of the map. You guys have a bunch. They're not doing anything, though. That's really kind of a problem. Um, there's something that... I, I guess you have to think of it sort of in the sense of, you know, at any given moment, how much value am I providing to my team? And that's something that uh, is really important because creating man advantages in different areas of the map only matters if you're actually doing something with that advantage. So having three people up here versus two people up here doesn't matter. That means that you're straight up in in a uh, risky position as the solo person that's down here. Because if they, they're able to gang up on you, if you get caught in a zombie wall, you could die. Good route. Okay. So yeah, you're, you're, you're not going to win the 2v1 trade almost ever. So you can play this relatively safely. Allow these seed shines to move up. You don't want to clear them while they're out here. Too risky. So got to back up a little. Let them get closer. See, this is you're, 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 what you're doing right now is keeping them from being in a super safe position. If they come out to here, or whatever here, then it's very easy for you guys to clear them uh, very safely. Didn't see exactly where Orphea died. I think up here. Yeah, Stitch has got the kill. So that looks like exactly the opposite of what you want to happen, right? You guys had three people in the top lane. Two of them went down to take vision or rotate down to... Somebody came to rotate bottom. Some people are trying to catch the mid soak. And then Orphea was left up top to, to fight against three people. All right, so this is, now you have two people in this lane. Um, as as the Thrall, as the solo laner, and against a team without a solo laner, you never want to be in a lane with more than one person. So this is obviously not great. At this point, if I were you, I would probably have rotated to the mid lane. Um, you, you don't want to be in the bottom lane because that's where the next objective spawns. Um, and so best case scenario, I think if you were pinging your team to get, grab this camp, that would be ideal. Um, once again, your camp, is, your camp taking skills are not great for this, this composition, so I don't see how you could do it with like two people. It would take a long time. You'd need to have all three and have one person trying to catch soak in maybe both lanes if possible. It's really pretty rough, but you can do it relatively quickly with three people and hopefully not miss, miss too much soak while you also catch soak in the off lane. But I'd like to see you ping that. I'd like to see you try and use your pings a little bit more. All right, so quest completion at 516. It's pretty good, honestly. You don't need to, like, as long as you're getting it around five minutes, um, like, you can get it faster, certainly. You can get it in, like, two to two to three minutes if you're perfect. But uh, there's, there's no immediate need for that. Uh, as long as, uh, like, this game, honestly, if you had gotten it by, like, six or seven minutes, I'd be fine with it because um, I'd want to see you using it for the chain lightnings for uh, zoning experience more. Now that you have it done, you can zone that experience way harder. So definitely want to be using every chain lightning to make sure that it's hitting a hero if they're close enough to soak. Nice, good root. Um, the root, so if you're going to commit to the root, I would also commit to the wind fury because if it lands, you want to make sure that you close the gap with the movement speed from the Wind Fury and get at least two of the hits off. Right now he could be at uh, he could be at like 30% plus another chain lightning, 20%, so or like 15%. So he'd have to run away. Chances are he'd just back, maybe he taps. Um, if he stays around too long and if you stutter step well, I think you could probably kill him. Straight up. Like just off of having landed that route right there. But yeah, it's too late. You have to do it while the route yeah. lands. 
And I think she kites me pretty good a little bit here. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But as long as you're using chain, line, put chain lightning on her. Nope. No good. As soon as the wolf misses, back up. Back up. Definitely don't want to be tanking that many turret shots. You can heal yourself up, but this is the place where I would say stand up here, use a Feral Spirit to heal up off of the wave. Because each time it hits a minion, it's giving you a stack, remember? Right. So this would give you, I think there's seven minions, seven stacks, straight up, gives you a straight up heal. One of these plus one of these is two full heals. Yeah, you're pretty low. All right, so backing here is just fine. The objective is spawning. Do you have tap? You do have tap. So yeah, if it, if it were me, what I would have done is tried to heal up off the wave using these two and, and tapped and then stayed for the fight because that would put you up, up to maybe 80% uh, life. It wouldn't be great for your mana, but it's it's a little late to be backing right now considering the objective is about to spawn. It means your team can't really contest it super well. And more importantly, they did their camp and your team did not. So. That's a. Uh, I think my thought process was I gotta go clear that camp. Right. And since Nazebo's right. middle, I was like, okay, so it's a straight four v four. If I go clear the camp. But I remember. Like I say, remember. some of these decisions. I'm. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, well, I just saw Nazebo in the top, right? right? And then, then I see the camp push, and I was like, okay, well, I'll back, and then I'll run top. I think is what yeah. I do. Clear the wave. I think. Yeah. So. In this position, uh, if that's what you're going to do, the best case scenario for your team is that they killed Nzebo somehow. If your team is able to like sneak around, get to this bush or something, catch him on the rotation down, that would be the best case scenario. Um, get to level 10 first, grab this experience on, in the next wave that comes in mid, maybe kill some towers here, because you're not going to get the objective. Um, it's very unlikely. Because as I said before, your team is low on damage. So as long as either you or Orphea isn't there, it's pretty low chance you guys are going to get a kill. That's how it works. Okay. okay. So basically, that should have been like a tank up there, you know, trying to get that camp or something. Your team doesn't just have that much, much um, wave clear in general. So it's you don't have like a specific person to, to clear. It's just the best case scenario is you did your own camp ahead of time to, to match it. And you don't need wave clear if you did your camp. But in this case... Yeah, they're gonna. They're a little bit ahead on experience right now since they're two kills to zero. Um, I think it's important that you guys catch catch up to them on experience, and the best way to do that right now would be to try and get the Nazebo kill, and you know, for you to catch this soak as well as clear this while while backing. So that's that's okay. Um, it does look like your team's not gonna do that. And once again, there's no pings. There's no communication as, as to like what that's gonna be. I see this looks like one. Yeah, okay, you did ping. You pinged and said getting out macroed. Okay. And doesn't look like you're on top, though. Yeah, because the team's fighting, that's why. So you're like, oh, I guess I'll, I'll come fight. Um, this is this is very much so just something you'll see at low-level play where people don't really see that, like, oh, we're outnumbered. Oh, uh, there's a camp pushing us. Oh, somebody needs the back. Like, they're not counting the numbers, and so they're taking bad fights. And in that scenario, when you're the person that's like not there, I'd almost rather see you not try and come to the fight late. I'd rather see you just commit to catching this up here or here because coming to the fight late is very unlikely to lead to a good scenario. But let's find out. Let's take a look. Super out of position, Orphea, he goes down. There's just not enough team damage on your team. So down goes Morganis, you get a good route. And you're going to get a lot of damage on him. That's good, but you're going to get stuck in the placebo wall. And that will be your death eventually. And eventually Tyrael goes down. So yeah, damage please. It's it's true. Um, the, the, the real problem in this team fight was simply both the you bad. and Orphan. Yeah. And that's not that you're bad. Not that you're bad. No. The problem is just that your team was not coordinated together. Like... If you're not there, your team shouldn't be. That's how it is. Um, and as soon as your team went in and you weren't there yet, 
don't even bother coming. I'd rather your team lose all four of their members and you stay alive, but have, have caught this soak and, and cleared the wave because that's more valuable than losing the team fight and losing everybody and not catching the soak and stuff. Sometimes te teammates are going to get salty about that, especially at low ranks. They're going to be like, oh, why didn't you show up for the objective and so on and so forth. Uh, honestly, like, there's an explanation for it, right? You were 10% life and mana and and uh, and because there was other stuff to do and because there was other stuff that your team could have been doing. But uh, the reality is that uh, it's oftentimes not the best to try and explain that mid-game. The best thing you can possibly do is ping what you want to do. In this case, I would have, instead of just pinging the top camp period, what I would have done is used the defend ping, maybe one or two of them even, um, at the top lane. So essentially showcase very clearly what it is that you wanted to do, because just pinging the camp doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to go defend it. It means like, hey, there's a camp. Defend means somebody's got to defend it, and it looks like it's going to be you because you're backing. That's how you communicate with pings. All right. All right, so this doesn't turn out uh, very well, as, as I did predict. Hopefully, yeah, okay, he should be okay. But they should be able to... Oh, they use black arrows for nothing. Okay. This should have been... Yeah, okay, they're still going to probably get it down. Lunar is way overextending right now. There's no real reason for her to be that far out. But no punish, okay. Because you just don't have damage. There's no damage here. So meanwhile, you are up here looking at... So this is also a bad time to be looking at the camp. I don't know if it was you that started it or Sylvanas, but either way... So Sylvanas was starting it, and I was just kind of running down in there, and so I ran through the bush, and she was on gotcha. it and okay. half held. And so I was like, hey. Got it. Okay. Um, in either case, they're actively killing your bottom fort. So uh, in this scenario, what could you do? Honestly, the best thing to do would have been if you entered through the bush here, don't even show. Just sit in the bush and wait. Sit on your mount, let Sylvanas clear the rest of the camp, and get lower and lower, and then bum rush her as soon as the point is low enough. Either you get the kill, or she blinks off and you immediately get the camp. But doing what you're doing right now almost guarantees that you get neither, basically. Does that make sense? Yeah. Alright, so you commit for the earthquake, but there's it's not low enough. Oh, your team's going in for a fight. So here's the same same story, right? Take a look. Right. Damage missing. Right. And, and so like you're going to get things low, and then they're not going to die. And they're going to be able to get away because they have a Lucio. He's not even giving them speed. He doesn't have to. It's pretty funny, actually. Meanwhile, you got your team is getting, you know, just out outlaned for the most part. They're, they're missing a little bit of top soak, so that's one thing. But you guys used a bunch of, of your ultimates here. They used, eh, they used a couple of theirs. That's about even. I'd say that's fair. All right. So that's a lot of damage on the mid fort. Almost dead. Good save. There's a camp. So the, the one thing to think about with camps is as long as you're catching soak in every, every lane, there's nothing better to do than take a camp because... The only other thing you could be doing is like trying to get kills, but uh, or go for an invade or something. But those are risky. Doing your own camp is ne almost never risky, and as long as you're still catching the soak in every every lane, there's no reason not to. That's sort of how you want to think about it. So whenever camps are available, I recommend you know pinging them, making sure that uh, you have one or two people that that are doing them. Ideally, you want to have a composition that has one person that's really good at camps. Um, honestly, Thrall in this composition is probably the best camp taker. It's not great, but it's better than most of the rest. Orpheus' abilities don't get cooldown reset off of camps. Uh, Tyrael is pretty low damage. Well, Ganus is okay, but very, very low auto attack damage as well. So, Alright. Next objective is going to be on the top and on the bottom. And there's also a boss that is available at this point in the game. Um, Orpheus is still up here. Nobody else is defending, so this is a free fort for you guys. It's not bad. I think the best case scenario is you defend down here a little bit. So Thrall has already, or not Thrall, Stitches has already started to tank the fort shot. So he's got the slow on him, so you could guarantee 
uh, the feral spirit on him if you want and start chunking him out. But the most important thing for you to do right now as the pro move is to step one step over to the to the left here and use your feral root so that it's not only hitting all three of these heroes, it's also hitting the minions. And that's the far more important part. Because in this situation right now, the faster you clear these minions, the faster your fort becomes a hero, basically, that helps kill, kill their heroes. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. All right, so you land the root on two. And... Okay. Got a little damage. Almost. Almost enough to kill Lucio. Looks like you guys are going to get the stitches, at least. No reason to go for more than that. Uh, clear this up, catch the soak, go back to mid. This is fine. This is not bad. I don't think this is enough for you guys to like go for for the boss, but... Oh, wow. Yeah. Hello. It's pretty good. Good trade. That's a pretty low cooldown, so it's no problem. Um, the one main issue I would say is just that Orphea, once again, is the one that's in the solo lane um, instead of either you or Mulganus. So that's that's why I think you guys didn't get the kill on Lucio. I think if Orphea's there, I think that Lucio can die there because, you know, judgment on a Lucio or whatever. He doesn't have cleanse. He's going to get screwed. So as long as you kill him before sound barrier goes off. Alright, Sylvanas is pushing out top. She still has black arrows, so she can siege just pretty well. And she will, yeah. So this is this four is gone. Um, I like that you're pushing this lane. Because it's too late to respond to the top. This is gone. This needs to be responded to 20 seconds ago. Um, meanwhile, mid, yeah, it's also going to need to be dealt with eventually. I mean, this is super low. It doesn't really make that big of a difference, but... I'm glad that you're pushing right now. That's that's the best thing that you can be doing right now. It's you're making the best of a bad situation. But you're the only one who's doing it, unfortunately. All right. So in this situation, I would have held your wind fury, held your root a little bit. Um, you wanted to avoid damage until that Nazebo uh, wall went down. I would have stayed down here. This is the safest area. Because as soon as the wall comes down, then you can uh, sprint out with your Wind Fury. Going into trade is very risky, because now they could potentially chase you down. That's what, the, that's, that's what I would do. I would try and ch chase you down. He has his push off. He could have chased you further. Yeah. It's one of those things that, you know, sometimes you just, you're not going to get punished for it, but it is still a mistake. Right. Eh, okay. I don't think this is going to lead to any kills, so there's no real point. Basically, make sure somebody's sitting on this point, and if they come close enough to try and contest it, then you can try and fight them a bit. Meanwhile, okay, two for one on the top side of the map. That's pretty good. You guys still have two. They have only one. So this is a fantastic for your position for you guys. He just needs to back up. I would recommend in this situation, you give him some retreat pings. Tell him to just back up, because... If he just sticks around and takes free damage while you're doing this, it's, it's kind of slowly losing. Definitely don't want to see you go go in again. Um, also, make sure you're killing the big minion. He drops a globe and experience, so make sure you're doing that. The chances of these two heroes securing kills on these two are very low. It's basically like if they completely fuck up. Maybe I shouldn't curse. Oops. All right. All right, that is all the shots. Not too bad. So you guys got the remainder of the shots top and, and bottom. They're still a little bit ahead just from structures uh, by having, they did a lot more structure damage early game but it's not too far behind. This is pretty low still. You guys are grabbing your your, uh, your camp out finally. It's really good. And you want to make sure that they're not like sneaking the boss, so I like that you're here. 
Take a peek. Good. Nice. Grab the camp. Sounds good. Takes them a little while to do this camp, but they're doing it. Oh, all right. All right. So uh, you went for sundering this game. Just want to take a look and see how I feel about that. I don't love it. It's okay, but I think that I would have preferred the Earthquake because your composition has a lot of heroes that like to be in the middle of a fight, and their composition has a lot of heroes that don't like to be in the middle of a fight. What Earthquake does is it forces their team to take the fight, essentially, because it's, it's slowing their whole team. And especially when you have a map that has an objective where they have to fight on the objective if they want the objective, using an ability like Earthquake is, is like a guarantee that you'll win the fight because they can't stay there. Um, same thing for the boss. Earth or uh, Sundering is okay, but it's just uh, I, I, I don't I wouldn't say it's uh, it's the better ultimate in this in this this game. I would also say it would be a fantastic way to counter if you get hooked, you can immediately drop like an earthquake in a really nice position. It'll heal you for a lot. Earthquake heals you for every tick of damage it does to the enemy team. So if their whole team is there, it's going to give you a tick every single time, basically, because it's doing a damage tick to five heroes. I didn't know that. I didn't yep. know it had a feeling. Yeah. And that's amazing against this composition, right? Because they have so much damage. All right. So you guys get the free kill on the because He was overextended there for sure. All right. Catch your soak. I would say in this situation, I'd probably invade this camp and then immediately go to, t to mid to secure this. That's probably the chain of events that I'd like to see. Catch this soak as well. You don't need two people down here, though. It's a waste. They're getting free clear up here. So, yeah, you guys need to be doing something right now. You got a free kill, and they have a person showing up here when you don't have one. So you have to get something for it, right? And in this case, I would say get this and get this. That's what I would tr try and get. If you can get kills, great. You've got a judgment. So you can press R on practically anything, but ideally Lucio. Definitely don't let them take this. Go for it. Go, 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 go. Get on the point. Oh, man. Yeah, that's a, that's a big waste. I mean, it's not the end of the world to lose a siege camp, but it's just it's much better if it could be yours. Um, you guys do get the kill, which you should have definitely have gotten, which is good. But wouldn't it be nice to have an extra siege camp pushing in the bottom lane? You'd have uh, right. three of them or whatever. Um, and then you could guarantee take this fort. You could do it sooner because you don't have to clear here. So just more things you could do. I guess you could go for the boss at this point. That's a viable option. You're about to have 16. They're a man down. You guys are all five here. Okay. All right, I skipped ahead just a little faster there. Um, one person face checks, you, you guys blow them up, that's fine. Keep, keep the boss tagged. Um, best case scenario in, the, in this scenario is that one person is you know, making sure that nobody's coming, checking the bush, but uh, you guys responded to it okay. I, I, the only problem that I saw was that all five of you went to go kill as opposed to, you know, making sure that one person is guaranteed to keep the aggro on the boss. Maybe Lily's still doing that, so it should be fine. Just wanted to make sure you didn't leash. Alright, boss is secure. Definitely want to finish, like, clear this up, pu push this out, get the fort, and then you can look to, to uh, continue pushing with the boss in the bottom lane. Because it takes a little bit of time for the boss to actually, like, make its way through the bottom lane. Um... Lunar is being annoying. This can't, this is about to spawn. Yeah, I definitely I wouldn't even push with the boss. I would clear this mid and then get on the on the on the shrine as soon as possible. And you can leave one person down here to secure the shots down here, but you don't have to actually. Here's a situation where they have to deal with you. They have to deal with this bottom lane pressure because um, there's going to be a boss as well as this minion wave, this catapult, and a siege giant. They have to have somebody down here. In this case, they're going to send Sylvanas to deal with it. But even that, it's like not even enough. And so you guys could get both temples. I would recommend you guys you know, prioritize mid because 
they can't get to, to bottom temple without first dealing with the bottom lane, sort of. They'd have to go like a really weird route. So I definitely recommend prioritizing this mid. Get most of the shots here first and then send somebody to deal with the bottom. There's a lot of people to come deal with this, but you guys just don't have that much wave clear, so I get it. Um, mm, this is very awkward now. Why is Lily in the bottom lane? Yeah, I don't, I don't know why she came to me, but... Right, so... What should happen is one person goes to clear this, maybe maybe Orphea, maybe Tyrael, either one, and then the rest of your team, you know, contests this mid, because right now it's a two versus one on the point. You guys aren't going to win that, and you're catching all the all the shots bottom, but you don't need to be, right? Because there's no urgency to cr grab this. You can do it later. Um, they still have to deal with this, so... He's denying shots, which is really good. That's not bad. Okay, Lily does arrive in time, but now Lunar is here as well, and you still have two people up here. So you guys kind of wasted your, your man advantage a little bit in this scenario. Now, this is just all a matter of min-maxing, knowing how much you can get for what you've got. And in the position which you, ha you guys had, which is having the boss captured in the uh, bottom lane as, as the temples are about to start, that's like such a huge leg up, not to mention you had a, uh, a man down, that was Sylvanas. So they have they have a man disadvantage, and you guys didn't really capitalize on it. They're, they're stabilizing off of this because of the fact that you guys are trading shots, sort of. Because you guys aren't going to win this. Alright, skip ahead a little bit. So they ended up sending two people back. It looks like you guys are going to get the bot keep at the very least off of the shots. Right? Yeah. All right. So you do get the shots there, and you guys are going to get the rest of these shots now eventually. That's good. Okay. So you guys got the better end of the, of the trade, but I think it could have been even better. I think you guys get all of the shots from the mid, all of the shots from the bottom eventually. You clear the fort first before the shots so that you get extra extra bonus shots. You, you would have gotten um, this whole wall and probably some of the damage on the keep as, as well. That's, that's how I see it. Alright, let's jump ahead a little bit. Oh, I didn't even see the, the kill on the Lucio. You guys grab your camp. Okay, they're they're. Uh, your your uh, Montanus is pretty far away from the rest of the team. Their team is relatively spread out too, though, and they have the Lucio. Uh, what are they doing? It's so strange. This is a scenario where having judgments really useful, uh, but he doesn't have it. Another scenario where I would say earthquake would be fantastic because if you can get behind their team and then use earthquake, you can kill like four people right now. You know they don't have Lucio. They can't speed away, so. Um, maybe Lunara might be able to get away with a Gallop, and maybe Sylvanas could Haunting Wave away, maybe. But you guys have Tyrael, you can run them down a bit, get the slows on them, speed your team up. So this is a fantastic position for your, your, you guys. Sundering goes off onto just one target, which is unfortunate because you also missed the route there. Um, I, I think you're using your Sundering a little bit too much for single target. I would recommend... If you're going to use it for single target, it should be to guarantee getting a kill, like, every time. Um, but if you're not going to be using it for single target, I'd recommend you use it for multi-target. So make sure that before you cast it, it's going to hit several people, because it's it's hitting four people is four times as good as hitting one person, just mathematically speaking. Not to mention, Sundering also does tick damage, so that's also healing you. The more people you hit, the more healing it does as well. Alright, so you guys do secure the kill on two targets. And all of that is really just because they shouldn't have been there. They had uh, Lucio dead during that time. What can you get with this? Not a whole lot, honestly. There's no buildings nearby. Uh, maybe you guys can take the rest of this wall... Um, and you could take your own camp, but yeah, it's not not that much to do right now. It's unfortunate. All right, no, nope, not quite. 
See, if Judgment had gone off onto Lucio instead, you guys get a kill. But because he's he wasn't CC'd, he gets the Sound Barrier out. But that's okay. Sound Barrier is a good trade. Definitely no need to really keep fighting them, but you guys can grab you guys grab this. You can invade theirs. Best case scenario right now is yeah, you are pressuring them by having two um, two two uh, camps pushing the bot lane when this objective does eventually spawn. That'll be nice. You can start clearing out mid. All right. So yeah, they they have to deal with the bottom lane. They have no choice. That means that your team should absolutely be the first one on this point. Make sure you still have the vision. Be the first on the point. Uh, you can do a little bit of damage to this mid wall first. 24 seconds still to go. All right, so you guys choose to push into the wall a little bit. Oof, close. Very close. All right. Don't chase, don't chase too far. I think that, that could have led to a kill if done a little bit cleaner, but it's okay. Back it up, back it up, you're tanking shots. So you guys do have level 20 advantage right now, but there is a temple currently active, so taking a fight underneath their keep is like the best case scenario for their team right now, because that kind of negates the level 20 advantage to a degree. They don't have. They do have Nazebo in the bot lane right now, so they're they're down a man. So it's not, hmm, it's not terrible, but I guess do you still have judgment? Yeah, it just feels right now like like everyone's like, should we go in? No, nah, let's not go in. One guy's like, no, let's go in, and nobody goes in. It's like you kind of yeah, all have to be on the same yeah. team. Yeah, it gets real ugly, ugly right now. Yeah. All right, let's take a look. You guys are just very like. One of you goes in at a time. Yeah. Oh, you get a lot of damage taken from that Nazebo. Back it on up. Grab the rest of this. Start grabbing some shots. Heal, heal yourself up. Uh, he probably shouldn't be backing right now. He just needs to stay with the team. Let's see how it goes. Careful. Yeah, this doesn't look so good. A lot of this doesn't look good because you guys already used a lot of your ultimates, and they still had a bunch of theirs. Um, that's the primary reason. Secondary reason is because you guys are just not together. Like, Lili's under Lili's, here. Yeah. Uh, Tyrael went back earlier, so he wasn't here. Like, there's a lot of miscommunication, not understanding um, what you can and can't do, and that's based on what your teammates do. Like. Even though it's not the right thing for Tyrael to back there, he did. So you have to play accordingly. You have to you have to be aware of what your teammates are doing, which is what allows you to do what you do. All right. So definitely this at this point it's ooh okay. Definitely not the right angle. You wanted to grab the middle angle here. Make sure you're landing it on the the clump here. It's important that you actually hit uh, this guy, otherwise he'll kill you. He should kill you. Yeah, okay. And Lily shows up to... Yeah, at the last second. But, you know, yeah, it's unfortunate, but uh, where did he go? I guess to clear this. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, you guys did have the level 20 advantage. There's no reason you guys shouldn't have gotten this, this, this objective for free, as long as all five of you just stayed here. But it didn't happen, so. Four people dead, and... Top key is gonna die. Yeah. And I was thinking they have a Sylvanas, they'll just come right in and the game's over. Oh, they're not gonna and so, Yeah. So they don't. I mean they should, but they're not, because it's silver. <laughs> but so when I said what a throw, you know, yeah. and then the Malganus is like they can end, but then they're taking camps and we're yeah. like, hey, yeah. they might yeah. be able to defend it. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Big misplay on their side. Lily's doing a good, a decent job of distracting the catapults at the very least, so that they're not hitting the core. But he could, he, sh he should be uh, dodging those shots a little bit better, taking a lot of free damage. Dude, 
Definitely want to clear these katas ASAP. Those are what's hitting the core right now. Okay, those are down 100%. Almost 99. Chasing down a little bit. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you continue the chase. Yeah. All right, you get the clear. Stay at 99%. Cool. They did do the boss during that time, so... You still have your bot keep. I think, yeah, you push out, push out, start defending your, your boss lane. Ideally, you can save your keep here. Start getting that damage out. Yeah, you're missing a lot of auto attacks, by the way. Uh, Thrall's auto attacks are very hard hitting. He hits for 473 damage, um, which is a lot more than Chain Lightning, right? So definitely want to see you weaving in more auto attacks for PvE purposes here. They, they royally screwed up their timing, right? The boss comes first, and then they have a siege camp in the wrong order, and then they're coming late. So you guys get most of the free clear on this boss. It's pretty great. Okay, decent fight here. Definitely overextended Lucio. But because this boss isn't dead yet, the towers weren't hitting him, even though he was overextended, so he doesn't get punished. Mm. This is one of those scenarios where I'm like, wow, Earthquake would be so great. <laughs> um, it just helps you to clear up those low target heroes, make sure that they can't get away. You know, I used to always take that. Yeah. And then somebody was like, you get more kills with sundering you know and so i just started taking that I'd, mm. I'd say about 80 percent of the time if you're picking thrall you should be going earthquake 80 percent there are scenarios where you want the sundering but um I, the situations that i would say are when you're up against a team that can get away from slows easily that's one scenario right so if you're up against like medivh there's almost no reason to go earthquake because Every time you drop Earthquake, he can literally just drop a portal, and then he traded out a 15-second cooldown for a 100-second cooldown, or whatever Earthquake is. Um, Sundering definitely is more powerful against, you know, low HP heroes that are very susceptible to crowd control, such as, with high mobility especially, so things like Zeratul, Illidan, Tracer, those types of heroes, Sundering can be very powerful. Um, but against the vast majority of heroes, the Earthquake is going to be more valuable, in, in just in general. It's like such a net positive, because it's slowing their team, which, even though it's not like speeding your team up, it's effectively doing that by comparison. So what that means is, if you're in a bad position in a team fight, it means your team can retreat. If you're in a good position, it means you can step up. So it's, it's so good. It's healing you, keeping you alive, um... And it does some damage as well, so it's just a net super positive in team fights. All right, so one keep to one keep right now, two objectives up. I think this is yeah, it's a good call to to force them off at the midpoint for sure. Uh, you guys have two katas heading to your core right now, which could be annoying. I don't think it'll end the game, but it could get some core damage. So ideally. You guys go grab control of the mid temple. They're going to back off, grab the control of the top temple. And as soon as it's clear that they're up here, you, you can send one person to clear the catapults or something if you want. Or you guys try and fight. See what happens. Can't do nothing right now. This is no good. And the material is almost dead already. Whew, all right. He's going to die in exchange for stitches. Big explosion. All right. One more situation where I'm like, Earthquake would have been so good. <laughs> because, uh, you know, they're yeah, fighting over the right. point, right? So you just drop the Earthquake anywhere in this vicinity, and, and they're stuck in it. So would have made it really good for cleaning up some of these kills. You do get the stitches already, but I think Earthquake would have secured both of these targets for free. That's it. So you guys are going to trade on your tanks. You force them off the point, but now you got three katas up here, and they're going to get the, the entirety of these shots if you guys don't go. Good. Okay. So you leave one person here to grab the rest of these shots. You didn't get the vision, so they know exactly what you're doing. This is a risky position. And then she leaves. 
Yeah, I get it. Um, it's not ideal to have the, the Lili as the one that's not here. If they all come up here, which they have, this is a straight 3v4, so it's bad for your team. Like, you guys can't split up. That's not possible. It's four versus four. So I don't I don't blame Lili for leaving. The main thing that I fault is not having taken this temple or this uh, this vision because it means that they they know exactly what what your weakness is. And all right, so you're you're got real low. I think you could have used chain lightning. I don't know if you had a if it would have healed you, but. Um, at the last second there, instead of just dying, go for the Q. Maybe it heals you, maybe it maybe it doesn't, but either way. All right, so this was, yeah, another example of just not playing your hand correctly. Um, it's fine to go for the top temple as four because there were more shots on the top temple than there were on the bottom temple. And so it's better to go for the top and give up the middle than vice versa. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. But yeah, don't don't go don't be greedy. Don't go for both when you have equal numbers. It's almost never the right thing to do. I'm shocked that your team that you, that you can come back from this. That they don't just end the game right now. But that is the way it, it gets is. Better. It gets better. <laughs> Alrighty. So all I mean, your teams are gone. Like one in four games are like this. Yeah. Just terrible decision making and stuff. Right. Sixty nine percent. Good job calling the don't chase. That is correct. All right, so you guys get to defend on your core basically here. On the Lucio, perfect target. Excellent. Um, let's see. Not not quite enough follow up on your end. As soon as there's a the judgment on the Lucio, I want to see you securing the Feral Spirit to follow up. You can win Fury to get close enough and get both Chain Lightnings off. Ideally, you can get some auto attacks in, but as long as you land two Chain Lightnings and a Feral Spirit, the Lucio should die after the judgment, just so you know. All right. He does still go down, which is really good, and you guys can continue to chase 19 seconds until the next... Uh, Okay. Oh, so he's thinking like, oh, let's chase. We got to kill. Um, but the rest of your team is not so much in that mindset. They they're looking at the camp. It looks like. He needs healing. Heal, heal, heal. All right. Jugs to the rescue. All right. You guys got another kill there. Material's gonna go down eventually, but it is very well worth it if you guys can get. Not just one, but two more kills. Oh, please. Please. Thank you. All right. 39% on the core. They have three people dead. Boss is not available for another minute. Um, don't want to give this to them for free if you can avoid it. So grabbing this with maybe one or two people. The rest will clean up afterwards and two people can come here. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Giving them this uh, this camp for free is just one more thing that you have to deal with before the objective is up. And you have to respond to this because that'll end the game. Yeah, you gotta go. Don't chase. Not worth. Go for the objective. Good job. Yeah, whoever wins this wins the game. So that's that's the way to go. Try and avoid as much of this damage as you can. There's no reason, no reason to tank the uh, the gargantuan or the toads. It can be avoided. Kill the gargantuan because in this situation, if you don't kill it, it's just going to do a lot of damage over the time. Over time, one more situation where the earthquake would have been amazing, um, especially at level 20. Level 20 earthquake with the upgrade gives your t whole team 15% shields, yeah. and against a team with this much spread damage, sustained damage, that's like. You just win, just straight up. It's like three storm shields. It's insane. Oh my god. Anyway. It's a little bit of a poor positioning of that, that Orphea ult. I'd like to have seen it more like here. Just uh, zone them out from, from retreating or whatever. But it looks like it does sun damage. Okay. Down goes Nazebro. Nice. 
Nice job, nice job, nice job. All right. So that's a, this is exactly, you know, the type of fight that I would have liked to see happening all game. Because, as I said from the very beginning, your team has a much more substantial front line. So if they have to fight on the point, your team's going to win. At least initially, right? That's, that's the whole thing about this composition. And it just... You guys didn't have that many opportunities where you forced that to be the case. Because a lot of times you just got split apart. You'd have Orphea go up, you know, off in the solo lane. Or... Um, you know, Lily would wander off, or, or Tyrael would back, or whatever it was that you guys weren't all together sitting on that point, securing it. And the one time that that does actually happen, you guys destroy them. Absolutely ma massacre. And just, yeah, go ahead and sit on this point to end the game, honestly. I think it's enough to kill it. Oh, guys. Boss? Really? Okay. <laughs> Don't need the boss. That is correct, factually. Um, okay, let's just back it up a little bit. So, um, I think the, the main key points here... Are you still with me? I didn't lose you, did I? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, cool. Um, so the main key points here, especially for your Thrall play, one, I think Earthquake would have been by far the better choice. Um, as far as build goes, I think follow-through is fine choice here due to the squishy nature of their team. I don't think that you needed to have the the percent damage uh, on your seven. Um, Frost of Grace, good. Thunderstorm, I think is really nice here. Um, Nexus Blades is a poor choice, especially because they have very few melee. So you're not going to be getting that many auto attacks off, especially with this build um, and without without uh, earthquake. So definitely don't agree with next blades in this situation. If you're going to go for sundering, I'd say you definitely go for a blink because it's just another gap closer or an escape. And either either way, it's much more valuable than having nexus blades. And okay. sorry, go ahead. That's it. All right. That so that makes sense. Yeah, but uh, the real correct choice was you know the earthquake with the earthquake upgrade. That was the right. correct situation. Um, Tyrael in this game, he did get good usage out of his judgment, but it would have been kind of nice to have sanctification as a way to counter their, you know, sound barrier. Even like as soon as they prop sound barrier, they they want to be fighting, and then you just be like, no. <laughs> but I think the judgment was 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 used pretty well here. Um, as far as the solo lane goes, uh, you could have played the solo lane much more aggressively when it comes to denying soak. You did. I'd, I'd say, you, you know, you denied some soak, but not nearly as much as you could have because you were too focused on completing your quest stacks. So once again, the only time where you want to focus 100% on quest stacks is if there's zero chance that you can get a kill and zero chance that you can deny soak. That's how, that's how you want to think about it. Sounds good. Uh, oh man, that feels real bad. Didn't complete Vile Infection, level 23. Feels real bad. Anyway. Um, as far as the macro game, uh, I'd like to see you try and use your pings a little bit better to communicate. Um, definitely want to see like the specific pings. You know, when you when you, do you know how to to quick ping essentially, like the specific pings. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So in in this case, uh, you know, you can do it with Alt or G, I think, um, and then just up, down, left, right, different ones for different directions. Um, that definitely helps to communicate to your team very quickly what it is you mean to do. Um, I want to see more awareness of the minimap when it comes to the numbers of people that are there. And if if there's if you don't have the numbers to take a fight, then you gotta be you know getting that retreat ping on. You know. Um, other than that, hmm. Other than that, I mean, this was a this was a silver game, right? There's there's a lot of mistakes being made all over the place, but what matters is you know which mistakes get capitalized on the the, the best. And I think that if I I could be wrong, but I would say that their team probably could have won the game more times than your team could have won the game, if that makes sense. So all things yeah, considered, yeah, I thought they had it won twice, and right. then they and then the Sylvanas would back and take a camp. Yeah. <laughs> would just be like, yeah. where's the, the Sylvanas isn't on the core? That'd be mm -hmm. great. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, so I think that just about covers 
my end. Do you have any questions you'd like to ask? The questions that I have, I mean, not not every silver game is this bad. I mean, a right. lot of times they right. they feel really good and everything's coordinated and you know there there's a four man ambush in the bush, and, you know, um, but this was just I just thought it would be a good video because it it does reflect some of the play sometimes. And sure. the question I have is like, um, like what do you do hmm. when you know the right call and half the team is making the right call, but the other half isn't. And then you ping retreat and now you have mm -hmm. two fifths of the team making the right call. And, you know, it just, that happens to me a lot, it seems. I understand that. So ideally, you if you know the right call, right? And I'm not, honestly, I seriously doubt that you always know the right call because almost nobody does. So sometimes you can be wrong, but the, the point here is that most of the time, if you do know the right play, you can try and communicate that to your team. And if they don't follow it, it's not worth trying to do it yourself. That's the, the unfortunate truth. Uh, if people do go along with your calls throughout the course of a game, great. And that can work out really well. But if if there are specific people that are on, on the team that are just not following it, it's, it's not worth uh, trying to brute force what you think is the correct play because it's no longer the correct play. If people won't do it, then it's not the right play. Um, so having five people do the wrong thing is oftentimes better than having half the team do the right thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I've heard that before. It's just so hard sometimes it's, to it's, accept yeah. the middle of the game because we're like, we're right here. We're level 23. Mm -hmm. They have three dead. Mm -hmm. Let's just push the core. And they're like, no, no, no. Yeah. I don't have any mana yeah. or whatever. I, that's a problem that gets better the more you play, um, the higher ranks you get, because people generally tend to, to recognize good calls as they happen more. Uh, but it still happens. It, in Grandmaster games, there are plenty of matches I've had where um, you know two Grandmasters will have differences of opinion on how to proceed, and neither one of them wants to admit they're wrong, so they neither one do what they want. And so... Um, after the game, whether or not they win or lose, they message each other and trying to try and say like, "Hey, this was the right play because of that," and the other one says, "No, that was the wrong play because of this." And it, it happens at every level of play, so you know, try not to let it bog you down too much. But um, it does get better over time, and you know, keep looking out for for the correct plays. But far more important for carrying low level or low ranked games is is capitalizing on their mistakes instead of like your team making amazing plays. It's so rare to have a team that like makes coordinated plays that make sense and are really good type of things that you'll, you would have seen in competitive matches. It's far more common that people on the other team or, or your team are making huge mistakes that end up with big consequences. That's really what wins solo queue games is being the guy that knows, oh, I can punish that mistake. I can make them, you know, lose an entire free fort because of a, one small mistake. Or I can, I can be the one who captured a camp at the perfect time, which led to a free structure. Like, it doesn't seem like it, but one structure being different in this game changes the game completely. Because one fort that got completely taken down by people instead of by temples means that the last temple that gets shot goes for the keep or that goes for the core instead of whatever keep died so right you know, it's you know that's what this map is all about this map is about min maxing what you can get out of the advantages that you have and that uh, comes a lot down to timing the camps correctly and being where you need to be as a group or splitting your your composition correctly in the right numbers if if they had you know, only three people up and you had five, that means you can go for both both temples very safely. But if it's, you know, four versus four, you can't try and go for both. It's, it's just not possible. So. Cool. Yeah. Any other questions? That's it. I, man, I appreciate the review. Absolutely, man. Thanks for sending it in. Awesome. All right, man. You have a good one. You too. Have a good evening.